Welcome everybody. This is an updated video for Blender 2.8, how to bend a mesh using the simple deform modifier. So let's get going on it. I'm just going to make something to bend. I'm going to make like a long square rod like object. So let's hit S. I'm going to scale down a little. Now I'm going to hit S, X. And let me uh, just stretch it out. Let's do it a little more. S, X. That should be good. And now I'm going to hit Tab to go into edit mode. Now you're going to notice there's not a lot of edges and vertices in this model. Okay, this isn't going to work well with the bending modifier because there's nowhere to bend. Okay, it needs bend points. So what I want to do is put a lot more edges in a good direction. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the loop cut tool, okay, which is right there, and I'll click. That's the correct orientation I want. That's not. So let's do that orientation. Click once, and you'll see the loop cut and slide here pop it open and let's just increase the number just to something reasonable I'll just put like 40 and that's pretty good you can hit enter or right click just to sort of apply that and there's all those extra edges now which is good tab to go back into object mode now the one thing we have to do when we're applying this modifier is we actually need another object that this object is going to use as an axis pivot point to bend around I'm going to do an empty for that. I don't want to add a mesh to my world or scene. I'd rather just put something that's not going to get rendered. So I'm going to put empty, plain axes. Now, depending where it was in the world or where your cursor was, your empty, I'll just pull it out there, may have been somewhere weird. Remember, you can always hit Alt-G to recenter it, right? Grab it and put it back to the dead center. But I'm just going to leave it there for now. Check out the axes. Z is pointing up. Y is that way. X is that way. And even if you take the local coordinates of the object, okay, they're matching. That's good. Okay. So let's remember those orientations because now I'm going to apply the modifier. So I'm going to right-click on my cube object. I'm going to go to the wrench. And I'm going to add a modifier. And I want the simple to form. With simple to form, switch it to bend, because we're trying to bend. And it wants an axis origin. You can see it's already messing itself up. So pick an axis origin, take the empty. Now, that is not bending around this empty. What I want it to do is I'd like it like a top view. So keep in mind, this is the z-axis pointing up. I'd like it to bend around the z-axis, right? You can actually make it go roll the way around. So what I want to do here is I just want to set it to select the cube again, our modifier, set the axis to Z. And now it's bending around the Z axis, okay, based on this empty. Okay, that's the Z axis we're talking about. Notice the angle here. I can type in 180. It's going to do a 180, right? If I do 360, obviously it goes all the way around. Now I'm going to leave it at 180 just to show you some things. Um, the first thing to show you is the position of the empty. I like it if the position of the empty is right at the origin of your object. So I'm going to hit Alt G. I just moved the empty right there. And so basically what that did was it's not scaling your object at all. Notice what happens when you move this off. It has uses, but it's also scaling our object, right? So Alt G. Both are right there at the origin, right on top of each other. So that's good. Uh, little tricks you can also show you here. I just right click my cube again. You'll notice here it has limits. Limits tells you where it should apply. Zero means to start the modifier at zero, right at one end. And 1.0, 100%, the other end. Check this out. If I take the limit to 50, or let's say 20, it doesn't apply the modifier up until 20%. So it's straight, straight, straight. That's about 20%. Now it's applying the modifier, right? And you could do the same thing to this end. Let's say 80%. And so it leaves a bit of the object unbent by the modifier. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with vertex groups, you'll probably also figure out you can make it apply to a vertex group. But if you know groups, you'll figure that out on your own. But that's about it, right? That's the bend modifier works pretty well. Just note that if you do select your empty and you do things like rotate your empty, 
like rotate Z. Yeah, you can start to get some weird stuff, right? Rotate Y, because we've told it to bend on an axis and our twists and curves were a certain way. You can just fiddle around. It's just easier for you to see the effects of different turns and the effects, right? Rather than trying to explain why it's doing that messed up stuff. Anyways, that's about it. There's your bend modifier. Uh, the other modifiers like twist and taper and stretch work very similar. Just try them out with an empty in there, origined with it, and you should have no problem figuring it out. Thanks for watching.